So what is the generalized method of moments? I'm first going to give you a concrete example when you might use this method. Let's say you run an airline and this airline owns one aircraft and this aircraft has space for 1,200 people. So when you fly with this aircraft, you, you sell 1,200 tickets. However, there's a catch. Not everybody shows up before departure. You know that the people who show up are actually normally distributed. So they follow this distribution. And on the x-axis, I have the people who show up, number of people who show up. And on the y-axis, I have the density. And you know that on average, 1,000 people show up. But what you don't know is you don't know the variance of this distribution. And this variance is kind of crucial because you think about this. Well, maybe I start to overbook my flight. Maybe I do not only sell 1,200 tickets, but I sell 1,300 tickets. But then you can run into this problem. You can actually have 1,250 people showing up. And if more people show up, then you can board on your flight. This becomes very expensive because you need to pay hotels for them and so on. So this variance is actually a very, very crucial thing for you in trying to answer the question, how many seats should I overbook? And we're going to try to get an estimate for this variance by using the generalized method of moments. And for that, we need two facts from statistics. The first one is probably one of the most famous laws in statistics, the weak law of large numbers. What does it say? Well, it says that the expected value of anything can, be actually, can actually be obtained by using the sample average. So it says if you use the sample average of something, then this converges in probability to the true expected value of anything. Very, very powerful result. And if you don't know what converges, what converging in probability means, please let me know. I'm going to make an extra, I can make an extra video on that. And the second thing we know is we need to know facts about the normal distribution. So distributions have different moments. And the second moment, which we usually call variance, is defined like this. It's the expectation of x minus the expected value squared. And in case of the normal distribution, this is equal to the variance of the distribution. And the fourth moment, which is defined as the expected value x minus mu to the power of 4, is in the case of the normal distribution equal to 3 times the variance. And we will use those two facts, the weak law of large numbers and those two moment equations of the normal distribution to get our estimator for the variance. So what could we do? Well, let's look at this equation for our second moment. We say that the variance is equal to the expected value of x minus mu squared. But what does the law of large numbers say? Well, the law of large numbers says that the average is actually a very good estimator for the expected value. So we could swap out this expected value and use a sum, an average instead. So, and this actually gives us an estimator. This is our first method of moments estimator. So what we do is we take data from our past flights and we just plug them in here. So how does this look? Well, maybe on the first flight, we had 1,100 1, passengers. We know that the expected value is 1,000. Maybe on the second flight, we had 1,000 200 passengers, the expected value is 1,000, and then we take the average. So in this case, if we have two data points, this would be our method of moments estimator using the second moment equation. But here's what we could also do. We could also do the equation, use the equation for the fourth moment, so this one. What does the equation for the fourth moment say? Well, the equation for the fourth moment says, well, 3 sigma squared is equal to the expected value of xi minus mu to the power of 4. And I think you know what I'll be suggesting now. Well, I'll say, well, we have this expected value here, but we can swap this expected value with the sample average. So let's just say this is 1 over n, the sum 
xi minus mu to the power of 4. And once again, we could take this to the data and use our same data and say, okay, first flight was 1,100 passengers. Second flight was 1,200 passengers. And this yields 3 sigma squared. So if we want to get our method of moments estimator, well, we need to divide this part by 3. And we get our method of moments estimator by using the fourth moment equation. So now comes the question, which method of moment estimator is better? Well, <laughs> both are valid. And you can't really say that one is better than the other. But here comes the idea of the generalized method of moments. Well, the idea is to combine both equations. So let's say to say, well, we have those two equations, which pin down sigma or the variance, let's use them both, because we can use more information using that. So how would we do that? So from the first equation, we know that one over n times our sample average minus sigma squared should be zero. And from the second equation, we know that our sample average minus three sigma squared should be zero as well. So if you look at those equations, then note that we have two equations, but only one parameter is unknown, the sigma, right? The other parameters we know, we know what x is, this is our data. I told you that the expected value mu is known. So the only unknown that really remains is sigma. And remember a fact from math, if you have two, two equations, but only one unknown, usually there's just no solution that solves both equations. So what do we do? Here's the idea. We choose the sigma squared as our method of moments estimator by minimizing the following equation. We say we use our first condition and we use our second equation and we square them both and we want them to be as small as possible. Why does this make sense? Well, if actually we find a sigma squared where both equations are zero, then our function will be zero. This would be the ideal case. However, as I said, we have two equations, but only one unknown. Probably we won't find a sigma that puts both equations perfectly to zero. So what do we do? We just find the equations that that achieves the closest value to zero when combining both equations. And why do we use those squares? Well, what we don't want is we don't want a sigma that sets the first equation to minus 100 and the second equation to plus 100. So we get zero in total. This would be invalid, right? Because in the optimum, both of these equations should be zero. And we avoid this by just using the squares. Okay. And by solving this equation, actually, we find our method of moments estimator. So what, what would we have to do? Well, we would have to take first order conditions with respect to sigma. So we would have to take the first derivative with respect to sigma, set the first derivative equal to zero, and then find our method of moments estimator. One quick side note before I finish this video, sometimes you might want to overweight different moment conditions. So you might say, okay, this is worth two and this is worth one. What is this saying? Well, this is putting more weight in our optimization problem on the first moment equation than on the second. So in other words, our sigma that we find, our estimator will fit this moment equation better than this because we put a penalty for not fitting this moment equation well in front of it. And this is called the weighting matrix W and actually, this wedding matrix W is important in finite samples. But if we're in asymptotic theory, so if we have infinite points of data, this actually doesn't matter. Because if we have infinite points of data, both our moment conditions should be met. And we should come very, very close to zero by plugging the true value of sigma squared 
into these moment conditions. So what do we do now with our estimates? Well, knowing the variance of the distribution is actually very helpful because I know how often it happens that actually 1,150 people show up. And if I overbook my flight by 100 tickets, so 100 more people show up, then I have a problem with 50 people because I can only fit 1,200 people on my plane. So if this event actually happens, this costs me 50 people times the compensation I need for every single one of them. And so I can mathematically calculate how expensive different scenarios are, how likely they are, and I can use this economic intuition to actually find the perfect number of overbookings. If you have any questions on the generalized method of moments, please let me know and I'll answer them in a future video.